Welcome to the podcast where we talk about all the things that are hidden in the shadows. This is Isaac, and in this bonus episode, I am joined by uh, my guest from um, the Total Conundrum, uh, co-host, I forgot her name. Tracy. Tracy. Sorry, I was, my mind just blanked. I don't know why, I can't think of German, and uh, anyway, you're busy <laughs> as well, but um, regardless, Total Conundrum uh podcast they talk about all things paranormal and on this bonus episode we're gonna join uh we're gonna dive deep into why and how and the things they've experienced as their own podcast so how you feeling good how are you good my back's killing me but um that's nothing normal (laughs) (laughs) well it couldn't be that we just sat through a two-hour recording doing our podcast (laughs) i had to switch venues because uh that chair i was sitting is not very comfortable um but no, uh, I well, you guys reached out to us about doing this uh, podcast swap thing, which we've never really done before. Granted, we've been on other podcasters' podcasts, and we've had other podcasters come on ours, but never we thought about swapping in the same day. So that was that was interesting. That's we kind of like, yeah, let's let's do it with them. We never thought about that before. But like I always tell everyone in these uh, these conversations, it's more more of a conversation, less of like a a straight on interview, but. One of the questions I always ask every podcaster, specifically the paranormal ones, why did you guys choose to start a podcast strictly on the paranormal? We went with, we do a little bit of true crime, paranormal, and the unexplained. I didn't want to specify, I didn't want to stay with just true crime because, you know, you just get too depressed when it's all death and murder and it just gets hard to to research and to take all of that evil in all the time and I really am intrigued by the supernatural the unexplained the paranormal so I wanted to do something a little bit different with ours to kind of have a little mix of everything because I do believe that doing the true crime stories and stuff it's great the you know people especially the cold cases getting the information out there keeping it fresh so i you know wanted to you know still do that but i wanted to have some more fun with doing more of the other stuff too cuz the paranormal is so intriguing the the cryptids you know all the things are just you know it's it's kind of like a palate cleanser so that's kind of why we decided to go with more of you know, a variety of different things and not stay into just one, you know, like genre. And we, we try to branch out to other of the, uh, the strange uh, topics and stuff like that. We kind of find ourselves always surrounding the paranormal. We do throw a little aliens in there, sometimes conspiracy theories, um, but we always stick with what we, I guess what we know best, I, i.e. the, um, the, the paranormal whole world. Um, but that's yeah, it's a, a good way to kind of dabble in a little bit of everything. So, uh, someone who's like likes a true crime or likes aliens or conspiracies or paranormal, they they can get it all from one place. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And we have fun with like the conspiracy stuff too. I've never really been a big conspiracy theorist, but like Jeremy, um, did an episode. We did an episode that um, Jeremy kind of took the reins on, um, the flat Earth, and because. Um, Kevin from where the weird ones are we he kept talking about the flat earth you know theories and stuff like that I'd never heard of that and so I told Jeremy I said you need to look into this I think this is up your wheelhouse because he likes to get into more of the conspiracy stuff and um, he went down this rabbit hole with the whole flat earth theories and then he likes we like to do a little bit of kind of putting a twist of fun on it and he created his own flat earth theory where he had like cryptids and um, like Bigfoot was like, he made it so like different, like cryptids across the world were actually like part of a whole government conspiracy with this whole flat earth theory, theory. like <laughs> the Yeti was like guarding the the walls of Antarctica that people can't, aren't supposed to cross and um, Nessie's actually is a, um, a sonar submarine and you know like all that he went way out with it and it was 
so much fun. I laughed so hard on that episode. So you got to have a little fun with it, too. So where did the uh, the name Total Conundrum come from? We kind of we went back and forth for a long time and everything that we liked, it seemed like it was already out there or it didn't really fit. And I there was a certain word. I can't remember what the word was, but I did the right click synonym and it came up with conundrum. And Jeremy was like, well, that's a." I was like, well, everything, the ghost, the the crime, everything is a conundrum. And he goes, it's totally a conundrum, like being making fun of it, like 80s style. Um, you know how everybody used to, you know, put total or totally in front of it. And we just shortened it to total conundrum and it just kind of stuck. And then he had the whole vision of our logo. I don't know. After the fact, he just he wanted something with a, a brain scratching itself. Like, right. you, like you scratch it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's we uh, kind of went with that and made the little fun brain logo and. So, yeah, it was a lot of some people are like, does it really fit? And I'm like, even if it doesn't totally fit, it fits our personalities. And we have just we've really enjoyed, you know, I couldn't think of our name being anything else at this point. So <laughs> now, I know you told us in uh, your episode how long you've been doing this. But I guess for people who are on uh, my side of Hidden Shadows, uh, how long have you guys been doing the podcast for? We launched our first episode. It was in July of 2023. So we're still a baby pod. Yeah. And already making waves. Yeah. We're loving it. It's a lot of work. And it's it's so funny because we'll get to the point where we get ahead. We'll be like a month ahead. And then all of a sudden that whole month creeps by and it's like, we're not ahead anymore. It's, <laughs> it's crazy how much work if if you don't, if you've never done podcasting before, how much work actually really goes into it. Now we've added the whole video aspect too, which we didn't do before. So now you've got the video editing, the audio editing. and But I really lo- enjoy doing the video part because I feel like the, people get to see your expressions. They're not just hearing them. And they get to see, I think it's more personal. Yeah, me and Megan have yet to do the video thing. Um Megan is very self-conscious of herself, so she doesn't like being on camera much. I know because she was just on yours, she didn't have a problem, but uh, it takes a lot for me to convince her to get on camera so people can see it, you. I did not <laughs> want to do it either. I did not. I fought Jeremy Tooth and Nail for a long time on it, and I'm like, finally, I just embraced it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make stupid expressions. I'm going to say stupid things. You know, Video is a lot harder to edit out all of the imperfections and some I've had to learn to just let some of the imperfections go. I tend to, my brain likes to think faster than my mouth. So I stumble over my words quite often. And Jeremy was very good at editing out those stumbles (laughs) in our just audio, but in the video, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to do that. So I'm like, you know what, this is me. Take me or, you know, take me as I am or don't. So <laughs> nobody's perfect. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I like, honestly, I, when I hear someone speak in a podcast and I actually like it a lot, I do actually want to see what they look like. And I remember you were saying to me that I don't, I don't sound how I look. Like people were surprised. Like, That's guy. Yeah. Well, I, I imagined a whole different person. I did. I totally imagined a different <laughs> person. <laughs> For a fun game. Who did you, what, what did you imagine me to look like? I guess it's, I'm trying to put into words my visions like I would have imagined you to be more of like how do you want to put more of like a a straight laced business guy (laughs) it's just that your your voice you have that very like that radio voice um more I guess I would have envisioned more of like a what you envision like a salesperson to be. Mm. Interesting. Um, Which, you know, it's funny how each person you could ask the, you know, somebody else and they could have a completely different vision. It's funny how each person's mind works differently. 
yeah, because when I heard, when I first because I watched some videos of you guys, and when I first heard uh, Jeremy speak, um, for a second how he was talking, I wanted to know: is he native? Is he indigenous? Because his accent reminds me of how indigenous people have a tone. But then you guys are from where you guys are. It's like, oh, it must be somewhere around the area. He kind of picked it up. But for like a first couple of episodes, I was thinking, is this guy indigenous? Because he had that kind of accent that reminded me of like the indigenous people I meet around here. Uh huh. But then I saw him. I was like, oh, well, no, he's not. <laughs> well, he's got Italian in him. Yeah. But, you know, um, we always joke around like his grandpa, his Alexander's side of the family he knows very little history of and there's a lot of kind of mystery to the Alexander side of the family which um we'll have to get into in a podcast if he chooses to go that way or not but we believe long story short we believe that his grandfather and grandmother changed their name when they moved from Boston to Minnesota and we don't know why or what, but so the, he would never like talk about any of his siblings or his parents, you know, and his dad, he thought was an only child. And we found out, or uh, he found out when he was in his teens that his dad actually had an older sister. So there's a lot of mystery to this, the whole side of the family. And so he's not exactly sure like the what eth ethnicity he is he's got the darker skin um the dark hair and you know the the darker eyes but we're not sure they always said it was italian but his grandpa used to joke around with him about um like the hispanic side of it and jeremy would always ask his grandpa well, how do you say my name in spanish and his grandpa told him it was Jeremy Tommaso Haleandro you know, just, you know, playing fun on his name, but we truly don't know what his, his ethnicity is. <laughs> it's so, like you doing a 23 and me and find out. Right, right. <laughs> and I told him he should do that because he could probably find some of his missing family members that are not, they're not missing, but connect with family members that he doesn't know that are out there because his dad passed away in his 50s. And his grandma and grandpa have been gone for a while. He doesn't know anything else or any other family from his Alexander side, which is crazy to me. I had to trace my lineage down, but I, I've always said a hundred times, so like I've told people that I'm, I'm, I'm Mexican uh, and my father's from Mexico and came over here when he was like 14 or something. Um, but they're always surprised when I tell them I'm a hundred percent Mexican because like, Oh, well, you dance from Mexico. You came over here, and they hear zero accent out of me, like not even a hint of anything. No. And and uh, it, it's it's funny because I told my dude, I grew up here. I grew up with everybody else. My accent, I actually had to figure it out because I study different accents. My accent is classified as Central American because you can't pinpoint where exactly where I'm from. But the fact that I use Southern slangs, I grew up in Texas, like y'all, and I say soda and stuff like that. So I have. Hints that oh he's from the south, that makes sense. But other than that, if I didn't use those words, you're like, where is this guy from? Uh, no idea. But it's funny because when people hear my voice and they see my face, I'm like, what? What? Like, like, because uh, I, dude, I imagine you some like, uh, some white guy that was just like that. Like, no, no, you, you see this? Yeah, that's kind of what I, <laughs> a white guy in a like, not necessarily in a business suit, but like I said it's just that the total radio personality not an accent not you know there's no i didn't even detect the southern the southern accent to it at all well if i talk like this when i went to places you bought i think that is too but <laughs> no. well, for me being from minnesota i don't i know there's certain words that we say that people you know laugh at or whatever but when we went from we went on a road trip and we went from, we helped my in-laws move into their new house in Tennessee. So we went from Minnesota to Tennessee. And then we decided to take the long way home because my daughter had never, my youngest had never been to the ocean. So we went from Tennessee down through Georgia, Alabama, went to Orange Beach. Then we did the whole, you know, New Orleans thing and then went back up, to, you know, from t Texas to Minnesota in a day. And... So as we went from each area, the dialect and the term of endearment would change from mm -hmm. each state. 
But everywhere I went, anytime I opened my mouth, they're like, oh, you're from the north. Honey, where are you from? Or baby or sweetheart or whatever the dialect was. And I'd say Minnesota. They're like, oh, my God, say that again. Say it again. And I'm like, Minnesota? You know, they would just laugh. And they're like, say this, say that. And I'm like, yeah, I know, beg about, you know, just the, the certain things. And I grew up in northern Minnesota, so I have a little bit more of a Minnesota accent than Jeremy does. But when people think of Minnesota accent, they like will imitate like Fargo, the movie. Yeah, Fargo. Like, oh my God, that is not how we sound. There is areas of Wisconsin and Northern Minnesota that do sound like that, but I don't hear us when Jeremy and I talk that we sound like Fargo at all. <laughs> That's funny. I have friends in Canada and I, I speak to them sometimes and they, they use different slang and terminology when they describe things, but he will say things that are like extremely Canadian. Uh, Pro- dude, you're not going to stereotype, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say process, uh, Z instead of Z, um, a boot. They really boot. get that, that a boot. How you doing there, bud? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Canada, eh? Yeah, we, you know, there are certain things. I'll make fun of it. You know, I'll do the whole, you know, oh, yeah, you know, you betcha, don't you know? Or a big thing in Minnesota is the yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> when you're talking about, you know, I'll play into it and I can pull out a deep, you know, a, a pretty good uh, Fargo accent. But I just laugh at it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, from Minnesota. <laughs> I know you guys been doing it not very long, but in the time you guys been doing the podcast, uh, what has been like, one of your most interesting interviews besides ours that you have uh, done so far? I would say we, one of my most favorite ones, I and mean, we've done a lot, a few, quite a few different interviews now, but I think one of my favorite ones was um, Jenny from, she's from TCPS Minnesota, and she also is part of the T- Minnesota TAPS team. Because that was my first time really talking to somebody that was that deep into the whole paranormal and the way that she goes about, there's my about, (laughs) Uh, she, the way that she, their teams like go into investigations and how it's not like the antagonistic and it's very positive and um she gives me hope because I would love to get more into doing the paranormal stuff and she started off being petrified she wouldn't even watch a horror movie she wouldn't watch any ghost hunting or anything like that when she was younger and then now she's like fully embraced in this so I would say that was one of my one of my favorite interviews and she's actually um offered to take us to this hotel in Minnesota that we want to go stay at That's uh, known as being one of, you know, the quote unquote most haunted hotels in Minnesota. So she was one of the most fun ones, I think that that because and she was one of our first interviews, too. So I think it was kind of, you know, I'm like, oh, I really like this interviewing people thing. (laughs) Yeah, we do it as well. We try to get people on the show as much as we can. Um you, know, you had a lot of interesting interviews when we first started and into this point now. So there's a, there's a lot, but it's, it's always interesting to talk to other uh, psychic mediums or anyone that's been in the field investigating because they can share like stories of stuff they've encountered and stuff like that and get their perspectives on what they've learned. But that's one thing I was, was going to ask in the time you've been doing the podcast, what have you learned around the paranormal, around the things of weird that you didn't even think of consider before we started? Hmm. I would say the biggest thing is that I've learned is that there is so much more than, I mean, it's the paranormal. Everything is so much more vast than I thought. And like, the difference in like different psychic abilities the I never knew that there was like how many people are actually into like um, or not into, but are witches and the different types of witches that there are. And like with listening to like when listening mm-hmm. to like your episode on 
the podcast that I heard it on about the whole different ways that you can capture and interact and clean areas and um, all of the different ways of doing the paranormal, like investigating and stuff. Like I'd never heard of the Estes method um, before I started doing this. It's just, it seems like every day, every pod, podcast I listen to, I listen to quite a few of them. I went away from like, I used to listen to a lot of the big names, the ones that are more known by everybody that you say, and people are like, oh yeah, I've listened to them too. I went to all listening to indie podcasts. We have a small group that of podcasts that we do trailer trades. We've done collabs. Um, we've worked on projects and stuff together. I focus on listening to theirs. And then I learn of other podcasts from people they have on. So I've got this huge list of podcasts now that I started listening to and I'll binge them. Then I'll move on to the next and binge. And then I go back and catch up. And it's just, there's so many different things that I had no idea. It's just been a really big eye opener and all the different processes and the different beliefs. And there's cryptids that I had no idea, never heard of that I've learned of now. And then you've got the whole conspiracy theory. I never realized 9-11 was a conspiracy theory. Never no. had an idea <laughs> of 9-11 being a conspiracy theater theory. Never realized that being us, you know, being on the moon was a conspiracy theory. I'm like, wait. And then you think of it and it's like, well, that could be true. Is it true? You know, it's, and the whole uh, Mandela effect, you know, how supposedly we all, the world was like rebooted in two, 2012. So I don't know. There's all these different weird things that I would have never probably ever thought of or crossed my mind or even would have known until meeting all of these indie podcasts. And I think the indies really go into things way more and they get out there and they do interview and you know you get more experiences from different people versus you know like the bigger name podcasts are all doing the same stories the big stories the ones that you already you know know about where the smaller ones are trying to do things that are more unknown or investigating like I'm sure you guys have investigated places paranormally that you know, like Zach Baggins and, you know, those guys have never even heard of. So I think it's just, I think being on the smaller side and learning about, you know, those other things and just the other niches of, or I don't know. I think it's just with being on the indie side of it, you just learn more and your, your people are exploring different things that you wouldn't have heard before. Well, that's a good that's a good answer i kind of like that the idea too um with different like kind of paranormal podcasts out there especially ones that are, aren't really well known um they might have a subject that they they've experienced themselves right they'll talk like well, i've never heard this before I'll listen to this do you have a, a favorite podcast out there i don't necessarily have a favorite i have a group a, a bunch of favorites that i'm <laughs> listening to i don't have one that it's like the one that weighs higher than the other, but I would say like the, the group that um I've ended up when we first started this, we were just on Facebook. We did not even go into the whole Instagram. I was not a big Instagram person. Um, So basically we were promoting our podcast and stuff just on Facebook. And it's amazing how many of your friends and family you think would support you in doing something like this. They don't. <laughs> Your yeah, friends and family are not your listeners. They are not. <laughs> they'll, you know, they love talking, you know, they'll talk to you about it and stuff. But anyway, I was on this podcast group on Facebook and um, had encountered a girl that asked me if I wanted to do a trailer trade. Uh, Amanda from One Nothing podcast. I don't know if you know her. Uh, I've heard the trailer on your episodes. I went yeah. to check Okay, so I encountered her. She asked if we wanted she asked somebody else about trading trailers. And I was like, well, that's an interesting concept. And so then she kind of introduced me to the Instagram side of it. And I'm like, holy crap, this is a whole nother world. It's mm -hmm. like podcasting, Instagram is the place to be. I mean, Twitter a little bit or X or whatever you want to call it, 
but through moving over into the Instagram world, I, you know, in the past probably five months, we've grown from having like a hundred followers to a thousand followers on Instagram and have collabed and worked with and talked with a bunch of different people. We've, you know, Jeremy's very technical when it comes to like the editing and the audio and all of that stuff. So he's helped people out that have had issues with doing that kind of stuff. We've had people help us out with different things. And I just loved that it wasn't a cutthroat like Facebook. It seemed like the podcasts I was encountering on Facebook were all cutthroat. They were out for themselves and they wanted their own growth and no, they didn't care about anybody else on Instagram. Everybody it seems like that I've met wants to grow together and help each other grow. Yeah. Promote each other, you know, do crossovers, do, you know, stuff like that. Like I was telling you on ours, our podcast, um, there's 15 of us that got together and we're doing a story collab. And I started this short story, paranormal story. And each person, each podcast created their own chapter, the next chapter. And then it kept moving on. And that's going to be coming out here soon. And it was so fun uh, to all work together to create this story. And it's nothing that I've ever heard of you know, being done with a podcast before either. So that's what makes it exciting. And we're not just airing it on our show. We're doing the recording, putting it all together, or we have everybody's recordings. We're putting it all together and everybody's going to be playing it on their own feeds. So you yeah, told me that and I was like, that would be something up our alley. Uh, one, because uh, Kevin always asked me if I ever wanted to write books based on my experiences and what i've gone through and i was like ah a kind of podcast is kind of like an audiobook of everything we've done but it probably would be smart to write it all down and kind of keep it one place so people who don't listen to said podcast and like reading could go find it but he always talked about uh, my ability and what i can do saying you think if i made a comic book about it or something like that yeah you would be down for that and i was like well I mean, if you want to, because he, he, he he's already starting another comic book on something else. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. He, talk, he, talk about I forgot what it was, but he said he's going to write a comic book and he's based on some kind of cryptid or something else out there. Um, but we were talking about that, and I was like, because it's my ability sounds like if you were to do it in like a comic book kind of style, so people can see, right? I was like, dude, if you could visually see what I do, it would be almost on par with any movie of special effects that you could think of. Oh, definitely. Uh, so putting it in on like in color and, and a comic form would be awesome. But um, I just something I thought of. But the whole collab story thing, if you guys had a ghost story going on and then I introduce uh, me and my character into the story and see how it changes everything. <laughs> oh, right. And that's just it, too. It's like every um, there's a podcast out of oh, where are they? I think they're in Kentucky called Couple of Couples. It's uh, it's uh, two couples, like husband and wife, um, two husband and wife couples. And they don't do true crime. They don't do paranormal. They don't do any of that. They basically get together once a month, drink, and just shoot the shit. It's one of the funniest podcasts that I've ever heard. They've got that, you know, their southern twang. They've just their raw humor. And it's, I met them just when we first went on to Instagram, I just started shooting messages to people, you know, I'd start following people and I'd be like, Hey, we're a new podcast. We'd love to collab, you know, whether you want to do a trailer trade or, you know, do something else, whatever. And so I got a group of people that we were doing trailer trades and stuff, which now we have a group that we, you know, we always play each other's trailers but as I meet new people, I play their trailers as well. But anyway, so that's how I encountered them was just by messaging them. And um, oh, my gosh, I totally lost my train of thought now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I do it all the time, too. Like what? Podcasting world, helping people, community. Oh, my God. I'm trying to think of the word that connected me to that last thought. <laughs> oh, that is terrible. My uh, right away thought, yes, yeah. but um, anyway, great podcast to go and listen to. But 
oh, there are person, different personalities in the stories. That's what it was. Um, so a couple of couples, you know, it's a guy, two guys, two girls, and they were in one of the, one of the parts of the story I was reading, you know, they're talking about how this person is like hiding in this area and, you know, she's trying to control her breath and cause she's scared and she's like, you know, trying to be invisible. And all of a sudden she lets out a fart. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, and it was totally because her whole body was so tense. And when she just relaxed, it just escaped, you know, and I totally did, did not do the, how they said it any justice. You'll have to listen to it when it comes out, but that was their personality. They, they pick on each other. They have kind of like the, you know, the, um, the funny adult humor and I'm reading this and I'm like, you know, all intense and you know how she's hiding and she's concentrating and then all of a sudden just a fart slips out. And I was like, I just busted out laughing because that was totally their personality. So it was so fun to see everybody's personalities come out in each section of the story, but it still all flowed together so well. Yeah. Well, I look forward to listening to that when it finally gets out there in the airwaves. Yeah, it should be soon. Jeremy's got it. To, he's starting to put it all together now. So, With the, the time you guys have been doing the podcast, is there a favorite subject you guys like to always go back to and talk about? I would say my favorite subject is usually paranormal. Anything specific in the paranormal? I wouldn't say anything specific. I just think that I I'm really enjoying learning more and more about it and i you know getting more more brave of wanting to go to certain places and to start i want to you know start having more experiences that i choose to have you know i guess like i we have a, a daycare that we clean that's haunted and I choose not to want to have experiences there. <laughs> but I like going to the fact that I, you know, I'm trying to branch out and to learn more. And I want to, you know, get more into being able to, you know, do communications. I want to get to the point where I'd be brave enough to do like an Estes method and you know, and maybe open myself up a little bit because I do believe that, you know, when I was younger, I had a lot of paranormal experiences. I had experiences as an adult as well, um, but I used to have like premonition dreams and stuff like that. And I think I kind of closed myself off to it. So I'm kind of wanting to see if to learn how to open back up again. But in the same sense, it kind of terrifies me to open up because you know what you I don't know I don't know how you and your wife you know day to day with everything that you guys go through and experience and can do I couldn't imagine having that be a part of my life my life's already chaotic enough <laughs> oh uh, it was it was it was hilarious why don't you bring that up reminded me of something when when we, me and Megan were talking about what we plan to do with our abilities, what we need to do, where we go, right? Talk about we have to go to this location, pull demons, take care of this, um, use certain spells, stuff like that. She was shaking her head and goes, what? It's like, of all things I imagine my life at this age is never this. <laughs> right. I mean, when I make my list, it's, you know, follow up with podcasters, uh, you know, update budget, you know, spreadsheet, do laundry, you know, you know stuff like that. Uh, the with the hours that we work and doing the podcast on the side and trying to add something else, like with you, with what you guys deal with, I could not imagine having that being an additional thing. I'd have to be right. Oh, I got to go to such and such a remote view into this place and put uh, spirit and body bag, bring back for my husband to, you know, <laughs> to manage to the other world. And Oh my gosh. So I know she said she's a list maker too. So I could just imagine what some of her lists look like. <laughs> Whole binder of them. Some of them not even done. She she <laughs> made and do them. Like she, I don't know why you made a list. You're not going to do it. It's like oh, it just helps me organize it. And like then do the list, and then you make another list for that list because you've got yeah, it's like a <laughs> connection of strings that are in a big old tie knot. Anyway, 
Yeah, um, I've got uh, books upon book, like notebooks. I've got, I keep track of all of our analytics in one. I had it all like in one, but it got to be too chaotic. So I've got an analytic notebook. I've got, you know, our bills. I've got our daily schedule, but then I've got two calendars for daily schedule, which I end up screwing up. So I've got the one on my desk, but I forget to put it in my planner. And I'm like, I'm so, for being a computer person in the past, I'm very paper, pen and paper for mm -hmm. scheduling. I'm like, I really need to get into doing the computerized scheduling. <laughs> I, I just I either try to make a mental note or I like put notes in my, my note app on my phone yeah. uh, for that. I'm like, oh, let me type that down real quick so I don't have to write it. Because usually with my job, I don't have a pen or paper with me, so I can't write anything down if I think of something. It's like, oh, that would be a good subject to talk about. And then I'm like, oh, crap, I totally forgot what it was. And I have to put it in the notes for, for me to remember. Otherwise, I'll totally forget because my mind will move on to something else. And leave that behind, like miles oh, yeah. behind. Get back to it. <laughs> yes, me too. And that's that ADHD thing too, <laughs> where your mind just all the time, consistently. I'm always thinking about something. I'm always moving on to something. Is either thoughts of paranormal, like a puzzle I'm trying to figure out, and or just adding things I learned to it. Yeah, it's it's always a, a conundrum up here. A hey, conundrum. <laughs> Uh, something I always ask on podcasts, especially those in the paranormal community, um, I find that there's two kinds of people who talk about the paranormal. Those who are players in the game, they're out there investigating, they're out there doing investigations, or they live in a haunted house, and they have a butt ton of experiences that create the reason why they started in the first place. Or you're a spectator, you like watching other people other things of hauntings you like talking about it but you never go out and try to experience it for yourself or you don't have any experiences personally from your life but you've always been interested in it so one thing i always ask do you consider yourself a spectator or a player in the game i would say i probably i'm a little bit of both mm -hmm. i have had experiences and i like watching and learning and hearing about it and now we're starting to kind of venture into being a little bit more players in the games um where we started buying certain equipment and started planning we have a bucket list on the wall we call it our uh our conundrum bucket list and of different places that we want to go and explore and experience or different um different like places we want to do a little bit more research and stuff on the person Jenny that I was talking about earlier, she keeps saying, like I told her if I went to Waverly House, I'd probably end up sitting in the car. And <laughs> she said that there would be a bunch of paranormal people that would, you know, just lash me for that because I guess Waverly House is like the Disney world of the paranormal. Everybody wants to go there. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have to build up to that. <laughs> so I'm trying to get myself more, I'm trying to get the fear to subside the fear more and just let the lightness of some of it come in because I just think it's, it's something that, I mean, I want to understand. I want to know more about. And... That's good. Cause I, I've often met uh, podcasters who I do interviews with and I tell them everything I experienced and they're like, not for me. And, and, I, and I told them uh, you can only be a spectator for so long before you decide to want to get into it. And I, I think it was um, my friend Charlie from uh, Believe in the Bazaar. He he said, watch me. Like, <laughs> he does not want to be part of it whatsoever. He likes talking about it, but he does not want to be involved in it whatsoever. That's why he commends me so much, because I'm out there going into some of the most darkest, dangerous places doing what I do, and he wouldn't even be in the same state or something like that if it was around. So he uh, he likes talking about it, but he's not being part of it. So that's why those podcasters the paranormal like yourself who talk about it now actually want to go and experience it uh i'm, I'm glad that there's more because then you get to get that perspective right. of being in a haunted location hearing voices hearing the stuff hearing the tapping being grabbed or touched or feeling the cold air change all the things you ever heard it was talk about so you, now you have the perspective so when you talk about a haunted location on your on your podcast then you're like oh i understand i know what that feels like because i did that too right yeah, and like I said, I've had experiences. I grew up in a very haunted house. And um, yeah. what's that? 
the do tell? Well, it was a very, very old school house. Um, so like in the middle of the living room, there was the big metal grate with the wood stove underneath. Mm -hmm. And that's how the, the heat would come up was through that metal grate in the floor. And in the bedrooms, um, the master bedroom and the other bedroom that was on the main level, there was like square, a square hole on the top of the ceiling or on the top of the wall by the ceiling. And then another one on the floor on the wall. So basically it was just a wall and it had two square holes, one on the top, one on the bottom. And that's how the air would, the heat and air would circulate through the rooms. So very, very old house. And one night, uh, my mom and her best friend were playing cards. Her daughter was my age. We were really good friends as well. Probably about six or seven years old. This is just one thing that happened to us. We, and it happened to both of us. So it kind of, and she still remembers this to this day too. So it was kind of like, uh, you know, okay, this did happen because we both remember it. But like there's this hand that floated out of the hole on the top holding a knife came over the bed and was like hovering over us and we screamed and the whole thing like shot through the hole on the bottom of the wall and there was times that you just wake up you would hear things um like covers would be pulled off and when I was a teenager we actually did not live in the house anymore um we had had a different house built on the property because the house just it was so old and um a girlfriend of mine and I when we were probably 12 or 13 years old we were like let's sleep upstairs you know because we're like we're not afraid of the ghosts we can do it and so we went upstairs and we had like a little slumber party up there brought a bunch of food and whatever and we sat up and we were talking about scary things and we finally fell asleep and I woke up in the middle of the night and I heard this like this crunk, crinkling noise and our bag of chips was going across the floor, like moving across the floor. And I'm like, oh, nope, nope, nope. Get not here. So I like screamed, woke her up and I ran. I don't remember my feet touching the stairs going down and I got outside of the house and I heard her scream, turned around and realized she wasn't behind me. She was still in the house. And I went back into the house and she was at the top of the stairs. You know, if you're standing at the top of the stairs, you'd be like this. She was trying to go down the stairs and her body was like at an angle. Like she was trying to push, but something was holding her. Hey. And so I ran up the stairs, grabbed her hand, pulled her really hard. And then we ran out of the house. And during this time, you could like hear things like you could hear like laughing and talking and whatnot. And I never really went into the house again after that. But my mom had a boyfriend at, a few years later, and he decided he was going to fix this house up and was going to make it livable. And anyway, I came home from school one day and there was a bulldozer sitting in the driveway. He was in the house and I guess everything with like he was in the kitchen area and things started opening and closing and drawers and whatnot. And it freaked him out so bad that he went and rented a bulldozer, bulldozed it into the ground and set it on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to get rid of something like that. But then all those spirits just go somewhere else. Well, and that was that was the crazy thing. And I don't know if it was just. I don't know. I remember said we had hate the it was a farm area. It was like a, it was an old farmhouse. There was a bunch of outbuildings and stuff like that. Um, basically this property, my grandfather had bought a dairy, dairy farm and this house and the farm property and everything was about a quarter of a mile down the road. And it just came with all the field and the property. So when he, my mom got pregnant with me, he, she was gifted the house just as to have a house to live in as being a, you know, a young, young, you know, parent or whatever. But, um, 
anyway, the weird things would happen in like the barns and all of that stuff. But anyway, when he burnt it or like set it on fire, I was sitting on a hay bale and watching the fire. And I swear to God that I saw like a fireball like go up and then it was like spirits were like, like spreading, you know, like the fireball like imploded or whatever. And, but a lot of like, I would try to tell myself as I got older, I'm like, Oh, you were just a kid over, overactive imagination, you know, (laughs) but some of the stuff that we went through in that house was just, and those are just a couple of experiences. And then as an adult, I had a ghost follow me home from a bar that I used to waitress at. It was a little girl ghost. And she pretty much resided in my son's room. And I went through about two weeks of hell because I couldn't sleep. I was so scared. And I was too scared to even go in and like, I would hear things happening in my son's room. Nothing bad. It was just toys. She would sit and play with the toys and stuff like that. And Um, toys that I would put away would end up in the middle of the floor. Like I'd wake up in the morning and, um, you know, there'd be toys that were not there when I put him to bed and he wouldn't move. And basically the topper on the cake was one night I woke this one on for like two weeks and he had like this little tykes engine and it was like a little engine that you'd have to build and you couldn't, the engine would not turn over unless the, all the parts were in the right spot. And that engine would sit and turn over at night and um, everything. I would dismantle everything. I took batteries out of stuff and it was still going off. And um, Mm -hmm. but anyway, one night I kept hearing like this bag crumpling noise, like a plastic shopping bag. And I didn't know what it was and what was causing it. And my kids were one in three at the time. I woke up the next morning that plastic bag was like flattened out on my son's bedroom floor with a little girl's um, name written on it in like Sharpie. And my kids were one and three. They don't write. Yeah. And I don't remember what the name was, but I called a friend of mine who was kind of into like ghosts and stuff like that. But God, I don't know what to do. I can't sleep. This is keeps going on. And She's like, well, is it scary? I'm like, well, it's scary to me. It's not doing anything like, you know, it's being playful, but I don't want it here, you know? So she told me that she came over and she saged and um, told me that I needed to basically just stand in the, you know, in the house and just say, I'm sorry, you can't be here. This, you know, you need to go back with me to where you, you know, where you were, where you came from, basically, and that night driving to work, the hair was like standing up on the back of my neck the whole way to work. And um, I ended up, I think I quit the bar that night, <laughs> brought her back and then left her there. Now, we have actually funny enough to say, the kid goes, we have a little boy who comes to our place uh, frequently because he, my son, he's only seven. So he does play with Killian's toys every now and then. So sometimes I would go down to the den area because that's where the shower is. But like when I'm then I would take my shower and I see a little boy like crouched down sitting playing with Killian's toys for like a fraction of a second. I I look back and it's gone. I'm like, oh, is he around? I feel I use my left hand and I feel around like, oh yeah, there he is. I can feel his energy. I'm like all right, he's playing with Killian's toys. And I go ahead and take a shower because <laughs> literally we have no problem with light entities unless they get annoyingly uh uh like hey hey. I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. Hey, hey. And then Megan's like, all right, we'll deal with you in a minute. Right. I'm making dinner. All right. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's where I'm as an adult and learning more about everything. I'm trying to help myself understand that there's a time to be scared and there's a time that you don't have to be scared. And you know, that the light entities and the dark entity, you know, and I think, Part of the reason why I think I have a lot of fear is because I think a lot of the stuff that in the, was in the house that I was grew up in, in the house that I grew up in, I think was more dark. And so I think that's where a lot of my fear of the, that comes from. And I mean, at one point, somebody asked me when my mom passed away, they're like, what would happen? You know, what would you do if she came to you? I'm like, I'd freak the fuck out. You know, <laughs> it wasn't that 
I would feel calm. You know, my first react gut reaction was like, I would freak the fuck out, <laughs> you know? So I need to, I'm learning to try to separate and I'm learning from listening to people about, all, you know, how they talk about certain things and the beauty in doing some of the stuff and the abilities that people have and how incredible they are. I'm trying to open myself more up to it. But it's like, I love listening to this. We do a haunted house every year. Um, we are huge. Jeremy and I are huge into Halloween. Um, our yard is decked out to the nines. I mean, we've got the 12 foot skeleton, the 12 foot inferno, the, you know, nine and a half foot werewolf. We've got, I mean, our yard is insane. And now we started doing a haunted walkthrough. And so I set each scene I set up um, with, or we set up pop-up tents and then put canvas around. And then each tent has a different scene in it. We've got the zombies, we've got the dolls, you know, the clowns and, you know, all this stuff. So I love doing stuff like that, but I wouldn't go to like a state fair or a put on haunted house and walk through myself. You know, I wouldn't do it because I don't like the, the jump scares. I cannot handle that, <laughs> you know, but I'll do it for other people. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like haunted houses because yeah, another jump scare thing, but my reflexes, um, I can't control sometimes because I had a friend in high school. He jumped around the corner and scared me. I accidentally punched him in the face because that was my first reaction. He goes, dude, ow, what the heck? Like, you jumped out at me. I thought it was something. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm afraid I might actually hit or hurt somebody when I, I do a haunted house. So I'm like, nah, I don't want to do it. I, 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 I'd rather be a person who works the haunted house, like actually scares people. That but that's fun. Fun. I've, I've done that uh, job that I had. Uh, I was probably in my 20s. We I worked for a company called Midwest of Cannon Falls. They used to be a big um a big line that was in a bunch of different stores. They designed different seasonal, they were really known for like Christmas decorations and stuff like that. But they did the Halloween decorations and whatnot. Well, they had a warehouse that they had just acquired, and the first year they weren't gonna fill it up. And the owner of the company decided she's like you know what we've got this great art department we've got this great you know all these creative people that work here and she's like let's just do a haunted house for the whole company and so each department got to have two volunteers to go through and create a section of the you know like design a section of the haunted house and stuff and I was in the end section which was like where everybody would like kind of end it was like the little diner we had like you know the scary foods like the foods that looked like fingers and eyeballs and you know whatever but I was a dead maitre d and I was greeting people as they were walking out of the haunted house basically I'm like this is boring so I went and stood in one of the black blacked out hallways and I made myself look like I was a mannequin and people <laughs> were really close to my face and all I would do is like put my hands up and go Buh you know drop them to their knees because <laughs> they didn't know I was real <laughs> so I loved I mean that was fun but if somebody did that to me I would probably punch them in the nose <laughs> yeah that way I don't do it yeah. um one of the things I always like to ask um anyone that studies the paranormal looks into it understands it it goes with aliens and monsters and cryptids and everything essentially strange what is your hope for the future of the paranormal um, when it comes to, I guess, people either taking it seriously or more people understanding it better? That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that probably more, I mean, I guess it would be nice if people, more people would take it seriously, but I guess more people understanding would probably be my, I would lean more towards that. Because with the understanding of the paranormal, you're understanding all of the components of all the different people that are, you know, come into play with the paranormal. You know, how each person, like, you know, you have your ability and your wife has her ability and how they they really complement each other. And there's so many different people out there that have, like, so many different variations of things I think it all kind of comes the understanding 
you know, all kind of comes in like one big picture because without you and your wife and everybody else, you know, all of the, the witches and um, the different um, I'm trying to think of another terminology for people that do the paranormal, but with all of, you know, without the visions of every different person, we wouldn't have the understanding that we have now. And I think the the more people open themselves up and the more people learn about it, the more understanding that we'll have about what really happens over there or, you know, the, you know, basically what, what, what happens on the other side of the veil, the questions, and yeah. hopefully have more answers to what happens with, you know, after death. I know. I always... I have to. I was asked that question years ago, and, I, and then I thought about. It, and my answer has always remained the same: is that I hope that the scientific community takes the paranormal more seriously and idea of studying it, building technology to map it and view it, all things better, to add it to another addition of science that can be studied um, in all ways. Because I study a lot of science stuff on my own: quantum mechanics, quantum theory, uh, string theory, everything that involves anything of the fringe kind of level of science. Um, to understand better some of the stuff that I can do and all the other things I've witnessed. Um, but yeah, I, my hope is that in the future that enough people start, you know, giving the paranormal more credit, right. That it can't be so outlandish, but also it means you have to get rid of a lot of people who try to fake stuff. Yeah. But uh, taking it from our scientific standard so it can be studied. Cause I guarantee if we had enough scientists in the world that actually took it seriously, they could probably build a machine or build something that allow us to view a hundred percent on the other side. Or have better communication versus us trying to pick up radio signals with white noise and, and switching channels and stuff like that. Um, well, you think of, I mean, just apps. think of the technology that you could have. Yeah, we got apps on our phones now. <laughs> right. Well, look at, I mean, if more of this, I mean, I love that thought, that way of thinking because, like, look at that. What is that? Um, the SLS? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Where it's the Xbox technology. The old kinetic uh, Xbox part, yeah. Yes. yeah. And I mean, if you had more engineers and more people with a, that scientific brain going in and just, I mean, the the possibilities would be endless. Yeah. Of what could be created, yeah. Yeah. Well, Tracy, I appreciate you uh, coming on uh and talking about your podcast and other paranormal stuff <laughs> well, that's too bad gonna be there, but he's, he's not feeling well so yeah i say us because i'm so used to it thanks for having me jeremy yeah. wish you could be here <laughs> well hopefully in the future we can all four come on um at the same time and discuss things the paranormal because that would be cool i've always wanted to do like a collab kind of a round table um with other podcasters that and we that episode either on yours or ours at the same time so either person who listens to your podcast a lot goes oh it's there or listen to our podcast like oh it's there right that kind of like um like a big episode a collaboration of us all together in one place uh talking about something um i'm trying to get a few of those going um mm -hmm. but uh talking to you guys it's very interesting to hear your guys perspectives on some stuff but um that is something for the future um <laughs> Other than that, where can everybody uh, find Total Conundrum? We are on all the socials, um, Total underscore Conundrum. Um, we have our webpage, TotalConundrum.com. And we are on all of the, wherever you listen, your favorite pod podcast platform to listen. We're probably there. I think we're on pretty much all of them. And uh, yeah, it's the majority of everything is Total underscore Conundrum. Awesome. Well, appreciate coming on. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah. And as always, we'll catch your widows in the next one.